Episode 10. Who will win? Walking toward the West Sports Field, Jeff saw five or six pretty girls heading his way. The tallest girl addressed him. Jeff, you finally came. Why did you take so long? It was Jessa Fitzgerald who had just called him. Jessa took out $10 and gave it to Jeff. Buy six bottles of water for the squad captain. Why didn't you ask on the phone? I would have bought it on my way over. Jeff asked while holding the $10 in his hand. Why are you in such a bad mood today? It's not fair. What's wrong? Can't you take it anymore? Jess's eyes opened wide. As she opened closed her mouth, her words shot toward Jeff like a cannonball. No, all right, I'll go buy it now, Jeff said, choosing to go and buy the water rather than argue with Jessa Fitzgerald. When Jeff returned with the water, he gave the $3 change to Jessa. The girls from the cheerleading team each took a bottle and drank the water from it. Jeff fan me. Jessa Fitzgerald ordered Jeff. Jeff had nothing else to do, so he started to fan Jessa. They were sitting on a nearby basketball court, watching the school basketball team practicing for a match. After resting for half an hour, Jessa clapped her hands and called the cheerleaders to continue practicing. Jeff sat alone in the grandstand and watched Jessa and the rest of the squad practice. The seats around him were all filled with the girls' bags and training equipment. Jeff heard someone say, Hello, why aren't you playing with them? Girl walked over from his side, smiled at Jeff, and sat down beside him. Jeff was stunned from a moment. This girl had long hair, an oval face, snow-white skin, clear black and white eyes, and a friendly expression. Hello, Jeff replied. Just as Jeff was about to say something else, a tall boy wearing a basketball jersey walked over and said, Hi, beautiful. Why are you bothering with him? He's just a babysitter. That cheerleading squad, he's the one who does all the dirty work. I have no idea why Jessa Fitzgerald let him join the squad when he's so poor. Oh, the girl looked at Jeff kindly. Before you came, this loser was fanning the girls in the cheering squad. That's all he's good for. The male fanned himself and gave the girl a teasing smile. Then the tall guy reached out his hand to the girl. Hello, my name is Dean Marshall. I'm the star player in the school basketball team and I've started my own business, it's doing pretty well. My annual income should only be around two million. What do you think of that? The more he looked at her, the more he liked her. With his good looks and other attributes, he knew that he could win any girl he wanted. The girl glanced at Dean's outstretched hand hesitation, but took it. She just looked at him and smiled. Hello, I'm Rachel Connor, a friend of Jessa. Dean took his hand back a little embarrassed, and said, Rachel Connor, it's a nice name. Jessa and the squad are training, and it's difficult to talk here. Let's go and walk around the field together, and we can have a chat. Thank you, but there's no need. Rachel smiled faintly. Dean was furious, but he was unwilling to give up on such a beautiful girl. He wanted to stay and fight for her, but just then, Someone on the basketball court called out to him, and he had to run back to the court. What's your name? Rachel turned her head and looked at Jeff with a gentle smile. Jeff, he replied automatically. His attention was entirely focused on Rachel's demeanor. He could detect neither contempt nor pity in her beautiful eyes as she looked at him. Jeff felt very comfortable with her. As he looked into Rachel's eyes, he started to smile. Jessa Fitzgerald and the cheerleading team completed two more jumps. Then Jessa walked over to Jeff and Rachel and said, Rachel, why are you talking to him? Jessa looked at Rachel with a little surprise. She pinched Jeff's shoulders and then shoved him out of the way so she could sit beside her friend. In a serious voice, she said, I only hired him because I wanted someone to help me carry the stereo and move the outfits. You can tell from his clothes that he's just a poor slob. I don't care about that. I think he seems quite nice, Rachel said with a smile. Quite nice. Jessa completely disagreed with her friend. 
She gave Jeff a stern look and said, I knew it. You only came over to talk to Rachel because you think she's beautiful. Don't you know your place? I'm warning you. Don't even think about Rachel. Jeff wanted to explain, but he didn't know what to say. What about me? Seriously, Jeff began to talk. But as Jess's gaze became sharper, he stopped mid-sentence. Seeing that Jeff had stopped talking, Rachel looked at him helplessly. They were interrupted by Jess's cell phone ringing. She took out a phone on and looked at the number. Frowning slightly, she stood up and walked away slightly to answer the call. Hey, Diane, don't be distressed. Your family's just worried because you're not married yet. Okay, if you're free, why don't you come to the amusement park? Come and walk around the park. Try to stop worrying. Call me if you need anything. Then Jessa hung up the phone and sat down beside Rachel in a grim expression. What's wrong? Rachel asked as she placed her hand on her friend's knee. It's my cousin Diane. She's getting older and her family's urging her to hurry up and get married. Jessa glanced at Rachel with downcast eyes. She said, your cousin is very beautiful. She doesn't have to worry about getting married. Rachel smiled. Jessa glanced at Rachel and tuttered, Rachel, you don't understand. Of course my cousin is worried about getting married. The problem is who will marry her. You've seen her photo. As he spoke, Jessa glanced at Jeff with a look of disdain and said, We can't marry poor losers like him, right? To be continued. For more upcoming episodes, please like and subscribe.